There's an awful lot of talk about booster jabs. There's an awful lot of talk about uh, um, sanitising more schools. Uh, an awful lot of talk about mask wearing in schools, more um, jabbing vaccinations for children, which I'm very unhappy about. We're going to talk now to Liz Cole, co-founder of Us For Them, a campaigning group who have done some great work uh, around the issue of children in schools. We now know, for example, that there's something ridiculous like nearly 400,000 children off school because schools are sending people home in their droves. Hundreds of kids going home from in individual schools because one child has tested positive for COVID. It's absolutely mad. Liz, a very good morning to you. Morning, Mike. Thanks very much indeed for joining us. I mean, uh, I see from the front page of the Telegraph today that the government's now starting to get a bit concerned about the operations uh, that the schools are running themselves, kind of interpreting the rules as they see fit uh, and sending home sort of entire classrooms despite the fact that there's no need for that? Yeah, I think there's two things here. I mean, we've certainly seen an increase in the number of contacts being sent home per confirmed case. Mm. So it's almost quadrupled in the last two weeks, I believe, from about five contacts per confirmed case to 20. Right. Um, I'm not sure of what the you know, reasoning is behind that. Um, it may be um, you know, additional caution um, from schools, but I really think... The key issue here is this is a policy from the government. It's the government's policy um, to isolate children for 10 days at a time. Um, it's been um, illustrated today in the by Nick Triggle in the BBC that actually they never collected data, as we knew from November, mm. never collected data on how many kids in those isolation bubbles ever went on to test positive. So we've got no data as to whether this policy was ever effective. Um, and so in my view, it's the government that needs to address this policy. Um, it, they need to issue clear instructions um, and, and this needs to stop. It's mayhem, absolute mm. mayhem. Um, and it's encouraging to hear talk of maybe this being scrapped in, um, you know, in July. Yeah. But we should be acting now. This is a matter of urgency. Children can't miss another day of school um, they need they need to be prioritised now. They need to go back to normal, um, and we need to put children first. Um, and our, its actions, not words, are going to count yeah, now. Absolutely um, right. Because there's no question and no doubt in my mind. Because you can see from some some of the messages I'm getting from some social media, from tweets and and stuff, a lot of parents telling me that their kid was sent home. Uh, they've had to take time off work, which they can't afford to do because they don't make any money when that happens. Other kids who have got siblings in the same house, still going to school where one of them is being told to self-isolate, sometimes sharing the same room. I mean, there's a kind of collective madness going on here, isn't there? It's absolute madness. And, you know, again, we go back to, is it effective? And as you say, there's loads of anomalies in this policy and the fact that the data has never been collected mm. on effectiveness. Is it effective? Limited? I would say. Right. Is it harmful? Yes, it is harmful. Very, very harmful. You know, we're hearing stories of children weeping, sobbing in their mother's arms mm. because they had to miss once again, you know, miss the end of term activities, can't even leave the house for 10 days, um, you know, missing all of their uh, schooling, but also any social interaction. Some children, Mike, have been isolated for five times. Mm. So 10 weeks, um, basically unable to even leave the house, um, according to the rules. And this is considered to be acceptable way to treat children who are supposed to be the most vulnerable members of our society. And yet we're sitting here now without actually thinking, well, this isn't a matter of urgency, right. but it is a matter of urgency. Oh, it totally is. Yeah, I absolutely agree. And you guys have been doing some great work. And I know Molly wrote a good piece in the, in the mail yesterday. But I mean, we found yeah. out yesterday that there were some children um, who haven't been back to school since last September when the new year started. And basically, we're now, what, probably three weeks away from the end of the summer term, and they will have gone a whole year without going to school for a day. Yeah, it, it's it's unbelievable. And, the, you know, the frustrating thing about this is that it could have... It was predictable, wasn't yeah. it? It was, it was predictable. Um, and, you know, every point that we could have actually decided, let's put children first now once we've um, you know, protected all vulnerable adults, let's put them first now. But it, we're still at a point where we're still having to, you know, um, argue about this. And I do feel quite angry about this today because, you know, here we are, um, 15 months that children have been living under these restrictions with these catastrophic consequences um, to their mental health, their schooling and their physical health. 
Um, and yet here we, we still don't seem to actually just be able to take simple actions and say, let's put children's lives back to normal. That's not an outrageous thing to say, but it almost seems that, you know, that's something that it, it's difficult to say, but it shouldn't be difficult to say. And I'm happy to say it. Yeah. Um, I'm not afraid to say it. I think children should be going back to normal, normal. Yes, um, absolutely right. Yeah. Well, I mean, I'm slightly encouraged when I see... Um, um, pieces in the papers about how masks are going to be done away with come July the 19th. But what I'm concerned about, Liz, and I'm quite um, sure about this, is that there will be some schools and some head teachers who will say, I'm sure of it, oh, I think we'll just keep the masks, we'll just keep that precaution, because some schools, despite government policy and government advice, have gone back to make, make, making kids wear them in the classroom. Yeah, and I think that's this is the problem, as we always said, once this was brought in, it's very difficult to put the toothpaste back in the tube, as the government is now finding. Getting it out is easy, mm. putting it back in is not. Um, and that's why I think what really needs to happen is extremely clear, unequivocal direction, where we would say, you will not have children wearing masks mm. in classrooms, um, rather than um, leaving it you know, in this sort of ambiguous situation we need much stronger messaging a much more a stronger back to normal messaging because it's normality that children need normality certainty and security um not this ambiguity mm. um and they need to feel now that they are being prioritized their education does matter their mental health matters um and their well-being matters to us as a society we've put them at the bottom of the heap for far too long now it is absolutely um, extraordinary that we've allowed this to happen. Yeah, and I mean, a lot of teenagers uh, I can see are just kind of a little bit lost at the moment. They're looking around going, I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know what I'm working towards because whenever I do take an exam, it might be that they, they sort of ignore whatever I actually do and just give me a grade which they think I should get anyway. They don't know whether they can go to college. They don't know whether they want to go to university. They just, they're very, very confused, I think. Exactly. It's it's the ambiguity, it's the uncertainty, because we know that, you know, looking back, you know, to, to, to being a young person, you know, you want to be able to plan, you make yeah. plans, you look forward, you work towards those plans, and keeping on track to those is incredibly important for a teenager. But what we've now done is we've pulled the rug from under their feet, there's no certainty, mm. we don't know what's happening, we don't know, as you say, whether you can go to college or not. Um, and even as a parent, what I found really hard about this all along is not being able to give my own children that certainty. Yes. So even my own kids saying, I'm really looking forward to activities week, mum, looking right. forward to picking this option or that option. And I can't, in all honesty, say, great, look forward to that, because as far as I know, that might be all pulled away right. if you get pinged as a contact. So, you know, it's it's... It's not going to be good for young people in the long run, is mm. it, if they it can't really make isn't. plans? And you can't even tell them that, don't worry, you know, come August, we're all going off to Spain for a couple of weeks and it'll be nice. And you can't even tell them that because you can't, don't know if you can go. No, you can't. You can't tell them. And we can't, we can't keep robbing young people of their aspirations and their dreams mm. and their hopes. And that's, that's basically what we're doing. This, this, these policies aren't abstract. They're real. They really affect people's lives. Um, and I think that the you know, government really needs to recognise that. Um, I think people are becoming extremely angry and frustrated for yeah. their kids. Yeah, absolutely right. I mean, I'm hearing from um, um, somebody who just texted in, uh, Olivia, that Robertsbridge School has now been closed in its entirety uh, in Sussex until the 12th of July. I mean, the whole school. Yeah, that's that's unbelievable i mean we we cannot have school closures we cannot go back to school closures but this is exactly what's happening it's school closures by stealth and we're making schooling and education disposable it's an added extra mm. it's it's a, it should be a, a constant in children's lives it's where you know children are, are safe in school it's where you know it's the it's the center of their of, of their educational lives and we can't we can't make it a discretionary thing no, we really can't. Well, Liz, keep up the good fight. We should join you in it whenever we can. Uh, Liz Cole, their co-founder of Us For Them, uh, trying to get some sense out of the school systems in this country, but also arguing that the government needs to make it far clearer what schools should be doing. Because if schools are interpreting uh, rules for themselves and getting it wrong, then they need to be told they're getting it wrong and they need to start doing it right, don't they?